Disney, Bud, AB InBev. There's plenty of companies. Like sometimes it's just so freaking obvious. I think about the darn SPR. In April of 2020, oil is trading at 20 bucks, 20 bucks a barrel. So what does Trump do? He goes and fills the Strategic Petroleum Reserve because, well, oil's 20 bucks. When do you think that's going to happen again? Next time you have a, a COVID event, I guess. He goes and fills the SPR. And oh my goodness, at MSNBC, were they furious? Everybody's screaming. New York Times is screaming. Oh my gosh, he's just doing a favor for his oil friends. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, people. He just filled up the SPR at a really cheap level. Well, guess what? Joe Biden comes into office. And what does he do? He taps the SPR. He takes the oil that Trump bought at $20 a barrel because now it's going for like 110. <laughs> and he goes and he uses it. And I'm like, gee, I think you should have sent maybe a little thank you note to 45 for that one. But of course that didn't happen. In other words, that's when you buy oil <laughs> for the long haul, right? That's when you buy the oil companies for the long haul. But if you're on Wall Street, and say you're running your portfolio, say you're a teacher or a firefighter or a police officer, you got some fancy schmancy Wall Street firm, probably BlackRock, running your money. They're not going to invest in oil. They're not going to invest in an energy company because they're going to say, no, it's not ESG friendly enough. Or we're not going to invest in this one because it's not ESG friendly or it's not DEI friendly enough. So what did Disney do? Disney said, oh, we can be super DEI. We can be really DEI. We can have all these different remakes and we can change the stories and just put in black people for white people or transgenders for what would have been heterosexuals or you know this, that, and the other. So they had no new ideas. They just kept coming through with sequel after sequel after sequel and along the way really ticking everybody off. I mean, Snow White is the latest example. And so that doesn't work. Their share price went down to, I don't know, $86, $87. Don would know this off the top of his head. It's done better since then, only because I think of the pressure from Nelson Peltz. I'm just checking where shares ended the day. But I think what's sad here is that there is a missed opportunity, a huge missed opportunity, because I think Nelson Peltz could have done so much good for this company. And sure enough, you know what? Investors are with me. Take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. The stock trading down more than 3% on the day, a loss of $3.84 a share at $118.98. The only reason it's even at 118, I kid you not, is because Nelson Peltz was agitating and saying, look, you guys got to get your act together. He was competing for two board seats and they wanted to make sure that he would have no chance in H-E-double-L -L to get them. He got 31% of the votes cast in his bid to become a director there at Disney. Disney's entire slate of nominees won, leaving directors friendly to CEO Bob Iger on the board. Bob wants his friends on the board. Here is the headline in Daily Mail. The Disney King, CEO Bob Iger, wins in battle against activist Nelson Peltz, landslide victory for current board in crucial vote. Let me just tell you how hard it is for someone like Nelson Peltz to come out. I mean, I'm not like, this is no violin story. This is, this is what he does for a living, but it's hard to do, right? It's hard to do. It's hard to win these proxy votes because you've got the odds stacked against you. After all, Bob has all his friends there. And all the investing groups like T. Rowe Price and BlackRock, they were like, okay, we're, we're with Bob, right? We're, we're Bob's you know, team. So Bob said, hey, I got a new CEO, Dana Weldon. She's waiting in the wings. We're going to make sure that happens. So don't worry about succession. And hey, we're going to get things back on track, right? We already like temporarily canceled Snow White. And we get some other things that we can fix and we'll come up with better entertainment. So he's like selling this idea to investors and saying Nelson can't do it. Well, Nelson, who said, look, I don't have any experience in media, but like, do I really have to have an all-female cast? I like women and everything, but, you know, do I really have to have an all-female cast for this story? Or does it have to be an all-black cast or an all-this cast or this? In other words, he's like, stop, right, with the PC nonsense. And so just the fact that he was there saying, hey, guys, get your act together, it caused Bob to go out and get a new CFO, the guy who used to work at Pepsi, I think, Coke or Pepsi, <laughs> Don, you better tell me if I'm right on that one. It was, it was one, I think it was Pepsi. Anyways, he brings in the new 
the new um, CFO, and he's like suddenly getting a little bit more concerned. And he's suddenly maybe a little bit more interested in having a succession plan. Dana is like the chosen one. She used to work at Fox, actually. I don't necessarily consider that a feather in her cap, but he's got to figure out a way to hemorrhage all this bleeding. I mean, here's an article from Forbes, and we're talking about the four flops of 2003 that cost Disney a billion dollars, right? So all of this is starting to add up, accumulated with this shareholder vote where Nelson was like, I need board seats. And Bob's like, no, you don't. And what was amazing to me was the fact that CalPERS, this is the retirement agency, that, or the retirement fund, I should say, the management fund for the teachers and firefighters and police officers in the state of California, all the government bureaucrats, you would think that, you know, it's California, they would be as woke as could be, and they'd be like, oh, we can't possibly have Nelson Peltz around here. No, no. Um, they actually were all for Peltz. So that was a big wake-up call. And I think this entire ordeal has been a wake-up call for Bob Iger and for Disney. Now, what they do with it, the ball is now in their court. Iger won. So where does he take his company? Can he do anything? What do you do with a company that's been polluted like this one has with the woke mind virus? It's kind of a challenging thing because if the, uh, the team, so to speak, the staff, if they're not with you and you don't have good leadership that can help see them through this, if they're all wokey, woke, woke, then you're not going to be able to write the ship. You're not going to be able to turn this one around. I'm just looking at at some of the comments here from I, I Leslie, I see you are no fan <laughs> of Iger. I'm just trying to see. I saw some stuff in here from Don as well, who said um, he 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 really is not a fan of this stock, and and it had gotten down to what was it, eighty something a share, and it's rallied since then, but only because of Nelson. I'm telling you. And so now the question becomes: If Nelson's not there, pounding the table, saying, "Listen." You got to do a better job. You got to be less woke. You got to get rid of these bloated assets like, hey, The View and ABC News. Sell it. Sell it to a private equity shop or better yet, Nexstar, News Nation. I like that network. I get some friends over there. I go on Leland's show. News Nation. Take ABC News and News Nation. And at least then News Nation is trying to be measured and different maybe you know and you get rid of whoopee and the rest of them that are costing you a lot of money and you'll be better off but can they do it i don't know i do think Iger wants to sell abc he wants to sell espn too look tv's dead tv is dead ladies and gentlemen i say that with great pride having worked 20 some odd years in it i love this new medium i mean at first my parents were like wait what are you doing <laughs> my husband's like what are you doing YouTube and I'm a yeah and it's great and I love it and it's new and it's different and I have a direct connection like to all of you and we've been growing and growing and growing I'm looking at these numbers and it's crazy like we're actually getting numbers that are very similar to what I get over on Fox Business now granted it was Fox Business and you know they didn't have the same we didn't have the same tune in I like to think that we were doing very well I actually had in all seriousness the best ratings ever at 8 p.m at Fox Business, the best they had ever had in the history, the 20 year history, if it had been, it might've been 10 years, forgive me. Maybe Fox was around 20 years, but in the history of the network, I was getting the best ratings they ever had, but you know, <laughs> they weren't Tucker ratings because that was the, the main ship. And we were like the red headed stepchild over, over there in the corner, but Hey, it's okay. I, I'm used to, <laughs> I've always been in business news. So I've always had a, a smaller audience but a dedicated and a loyal audience and a wonderful audience, a smart audience. I say that, a kind audience. So I love you guys. I love my audience. I've always loved my audience and we're growing this audience. So it's thanks to your sharing and it's thanks to this new medium and the technological changes that enable me to have a control room where Drew is down south and for me to be up here in the Northeast and us to be able to do this together. So it's absolutely wonderful and I'm super excited about it. But I'll tell you, Disney is, uh, is not in the best shape, but they've gotten the wake up call they need. 
And I think that's important. Did we see those vote Disney's? Did you see those, Drew? I think I texted you some. Yeah, see, he's got some. Vote today. This is what they did. It's so hard to win one of these proxy fights because you've got the company controlling everything, and they spent a ton of money on this. It's like a campaign, for goodness sakes. And they were telling all the Disney shareholders, 40% of shares are held by individuals, by the way. Vote, 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 vote for Disney. And then they even showed you how to vote. This was one, vote today. And then look at this. They showed you how to cast your ballot. Oh my gosh, it's like the Democrats. <laughs> vote, vote, vote. Here you go. This is how you do it. Here, let's just fill it out for you. There you go. <laughs> oh my goodness. And granted, it's not a political race, but um, hmm. Mary Barr is on there, you know, the car company lady. Um, she's really sort of the only, James Gorman's a big deal. He's on there. Uh, Morgan Stanley, of course, it, you know, they, they've got a powerful board, but Nelson, James Russell, who used to work at the company, Russell, uh, he tried to get on there and then Blackwell had some nominee. It just wasn't happening, was not happening. So cheers, Nelson. Thanks for fighting the good fight. I hope you're still going to stick around in some way, shape, or form. Maybe, maybe not. If you bought in at 80, guess what? You've made money, so maybe you call it a day. I hope you recover some of your costs from trying to launch this battle.